Alright, imagine this, you're at your local comic shop, flipping through the latest releases, when your buddy nudges you, eyes wide. Dude, have you seen this? Miles Morales is getting a vibranium suit from Black Panther. You raise an eyebrow. Wait, what? Miles Morales, in a vibranium suit? No way. Yeah, man, it's all happening in the next couple of issues, they say, holding up Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 25. The Black Panther rolls into Brooklyn, right when Miles is fighting off this crazy vampiric infection. And get this, the suit is decked out in red and purple, like a callback to the classic black suit but with that Wakandan edge. You take a moment to process that. So, let me get this straight. Black Panther shows up, sees Miles is going off the rails, and then hooks him up with a vibranium suit? That's insane. Your friend nods. Exactly. It's like the Panther habit but tweaked for Spidey. Lightweight, bulletproof, and probably packing some serious kinetic punch. But here's the twist, the suit isn't just for style points. It's got something to do with containing that vampiric bloodlust Miles has been dealing with. You whistle. Man, this could change everything for him. And knowing Marvel, they're gonna make this suit a big deal. But do you think he'll keep it after Black Panther leaves town? Your friend shrugs, flipping through the pages. Hard to say. I mean, you know how these crossovers go, sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. But even if it's just for these two issues, seeing Spider-Man in a vibranium suit, that's worth the price of admission. You both stand there for a second, soaking it in, and you can't help but grin. Well, looks like I'm adding that to my poll list. October 16th can't get here fast enough. Meanwhile, picture this, you're hanging out with your comic-loving friend, flipping through the latest releases, when suddenly they hold up a copy of Wolverine Revenge No. 1. Their eyes light up. Dude, have you seen this? Capullo is back at Marvel, and he's bringing the heat. You pause. Wait, Greg Capullo? The guy who made Spawn and Batman look epic? What's he up to now? Your friend grins, flipping the comic open to a jaw-dropping splash page of Wolverine battling a freaking dinosaur. Exactly. Capullo's teamed up with Hickman for this insane Wolverine miniseries. And it's not just any Wolverine story, it's a full-blown action-packed masterpiece, with guest stars, huge stakes, and the kind of art that makes your jaw drop. You lean in, intrigued. All right, hit me with the setup. Okay, so here's the deal. Your friend begins, getting animated. The story's set in an alternate Marvel universe. Magneto's brotherhood of evil mutants wrecked the planet when Asteroid M crashed into Earth. It wiped out most of North America, EMP'd the whole globe, no power, no tech, nada. But there's one Russian base with power. And guess who's holed up there? Mastermind, Deadpool, Omega Red, Sabretooth, basically, a nightmare lineup of villains. Whoa, you say, raising an eyebrow. And Wolverine's gotta take them all down? Yup, but he's not alone. Cap, Winter Soldier, and Nick Fury are in the mix too, trying to secure that power source. And let me tell you, this isn't your usual Deadpool. He's dark. Real dark. You can almost hear the snicked of Wolverine's claws. So, what happens? Does Logan make it? Your friend smirks. Let's just say things get bloody. Like, really bloody. This is part of Marvel's red band line, so the fights are brutal. And yeah, Wolverine gets taken down hard. But you know Wolverine. You can't keep him down for long. Now he's back, and it's all about revenge. You let out a low whistle. Sounds like a wild ride. Capullo's art must be something else in this. Your friend nods enthusiastically. Oh, absolutely. The action scenes are insane, larger than life. Capullo's really showing off what he can do. There's this one page with Wolverine, Cap, and Winter Soldier charging into battle that's just wow. It's like the panels are exploding right in front of you. Man, you say, already itching to get your hands on a copy. This sounds like the kind of comic that makes you remember why you love comics. Your friend hands you the issue, smiling. You won't be disappointed. Buckle up because this is just the beginning. In other comic book news, you're standing in your favorite comic book store, chatting with a friend who's flipping through the latest titles. You both stop when you see it Absolute Power Task Force 7 number 7. You can feel the anticipation building as you start talking about what's coming next in the DC universe. So, have you heard about the new team forming in DC's latest event, you ask? trying to keep the excitement out of your voice? Your friend glances up, intrigued. No, what's going on? You lean in, lowering your voice like you're about to spill a huge secret. Okay, get this, Amanda Waller's Task Force 7 is tearing through the DC universe, draining powers left and right. Metahumans are running for their lives. But here's the kicker, a new team is stepping up. And it's not the Justice League. Your friend looks surprised. Wait, a new team? Who's in it? That's the crazy part, you say, eyes wide. We've got Freedom Beast, Mirror Master, Ghost Maker, and Superman. Yes, the Superman of China, all teaming up. It's like the most random group of heroes and villains ever, right? But somehow, they're coming together to fight Waller and her Amazo squad. Your friend whistles. Wow, that's wild. I never imagined those characters working together. Exactly, you nod, your excitement growing. But they have no choice, Waller's forces are too strong. 
and these are some of the last few meta-humans who haven't been caught. This event is seriously shaking up the DC universe, and it's making heroes and villains join forces like never before. So, what happens after absolute power, your friend asks, clearly hooked now. You shrug with a grin. Who knows? But there's talk that this new team might stick around, even after the Justice League reforms. It's all up in the air, but one thing's for sure, this event is going to change everything. Your friend nods, clearly impressed. I've got to grab that issue when it drops. Definitely, you say. This is one event you don't want to miss. September 25th, mark it down. You both leave the store, already buzzing about the possibilities, knowing that the DC Universe is about to get a whole lot more interesting. Meanwhile, Marvel has some big news in the Marvel Universe, there's a fresh Venom about to make waves, and it's not who you'd expect. The identity of the one true Venom is shrouded in mystery and won't be revealed until the end of the Venom War crossover event. Starting in December, the all-new Venom series will take center stage, crafted by writer Al Ewing and artist Carlos Gomez. But here's the twist, Eddie and Dylan Brock won't be donning the symbiote this time. Instead, the new host could be one of four well-known Marvel figures, Luke Cage, Rick Jones, Robbie Robertson, or Madame Mask. So, who's it going to be? The gold accents on the new Venom suit might suggest Madame Mask or Luke Cage, though Cage's role as New York City's mayor adds a layer of complexity. Meanwhile, Robbie Robertson has never had a super-powered alter ego, making him a surprising but intriguing candidate. And Rick Jones? He's been every kind of hero under the sun, why not Venom? This upcoming storyline marks a shift from the cosmic themes of previous Venom tales to a more grounded, earthbound adventure. Dylan Brock will be in the lead investigating the new Venom's true identity. As for Eddie, we'll have to hang tight until the Venom War concludes to see where he fits in. Al Ewing hints that this story will feel a lot more like a classic Spider-Man escapade, set firmly in the familiar landscape of New York City. Mark your calendars, all-new Venom No. 1 hits the shelves in December, featuring a cover by Adam Kubert.